So I bet you're looking at that title, aren't you, and wondering, what does that have to do with video games and gaming? And, well, it has everything to do with it. So before we get started, I just want to say up front that this is going to be a video talking about the state of the channel. And if that's the sort of thing that interests you, then by all means, stick with me. We've got some ground to cover. If it doesn't interest you, it's not going to hurt my feelings. You can definitely move on. But if you notice that title and it caught your attention, then, uh, yeah, we need to talk about that. So I don't often make videos like this, but from time to time, I do, you know, pull the curtain back occasionally and try to offer some perspective on the inner workings of the nature of YouTube and how it affects the channel. And I try to offer up some kind of clarity. Now, if you're a fellow content creator on the platform, you may have seen this title pop up from time to time, or at least some variation of it. Self-help channels like to use it a lot. You, you may have seen it. You're only one video away from success. And that's true. You are. I mean, I guess unless you're already a success. But there's another side to that. You're only one video away from failure. Now, it's sad that it's taken me 10 years to learn this. So let's get down to it. You may have noticed over the past few days that recent video game Let's Plays have been removed from the channel. No, it is not because they got deleted by YouTube. I, I took them down and I am in the process of moving them to their own channel. I've had a second channel for a few years now where I mostly just stored Twitch VODs and I am reorganizing it into the official second channel for gaming, which is weird because that's what this channel is, right? Well, it didn't, didn't start off that way, but that's kind of where we ended up. I've always enjoyed making Let's Plays. I've enjoyed doing live streams. And while those things get a bit of interest, well, they're actually kind of killing the channel and they cause way more harm than good. L let me explain. So for the past month, for almost all of August and a little bit at the end of July, the channel has been in a really bad spot. It went from really good numbers to videos being dead within hours. And these are videos that are no different from videos just a week or two before. Same format, same topic. It was almost as if some unseen force somewhere flipped a switch and killed the channel. Just stopped it dead. Again. <laughs> Again, because this has happened before. This is not a new incident. Now, for the past 10 years, this channel has barely survived. I'm being brutally honest here, okay? Recently, it's been weighing on me. A lot. You know, most channels are either a success after 10 years or, you know, they've got like a couple hundred thousand subscribers or maybe even a few million. Or they failed and they've already left. And this time it was just so demoralizing and frustrating that I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted the whole thing to be over. I really just wanted to end it. I wanted to walk away from the channel. And all of the advice that I've been getting was that somehow my channel may have been put on some list that would perpetually keep it from growing. And that when something like this happens, you're actually really just better off moving to a new channel. Sucks, but stick with a dead channel or just try your luck again by starting over. Uh, most channels figure this out after a couple of years. Me, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do it for 10 years before I decide to start over, wow. Well, it actually kind of made sense. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, I'm not the only guy that makes videos with a female VTuber model and no voice changer. So either I'm just the worst content creator ever and people hate me, or the channel was kind of cursed. And I was leaning with uh, everyone hates me, but I'm not gonna rule out that the channel is cursed either. Either way, something is definitely wrong with the channel. 
And I needed to get to the bottom of it and or move on. One thing that gets tossed around a lot, and you may have even heard this from time to time, is the YouTube shadow ban. It is universally known that YouTube suppresses content that it deems problematic. Certain videos, topics, and phrases that can set the advertisers off, they can get shadow banned. Now, it's not a ban like you're thinking. It just means YouTube just doesn't really recommend it. And by not recommending it, it just organically falls down to the bottom into the black hole. Now, shadow banning and all of the stuff that's about that is a whole other conversation that I am not going to have right now. Just know that it is a confirmed thing. Now, what was suggested to me was that my channel was somehow shadow banned. And there are several ways aside from pissing off the advertisers that you can get your channel sort of suppressed. Um, you can get caught fudging your watch time uh, by padding your view count or manipulating the system somehow. Uh, another way that this can happen is if, say, your channel violates the YouTube community guidelines. So if you break the rules, YouTube suppresses your channel so that it can conduct an audit of your channel's activity. YouTube doesn't like to reward your malfeasance by recommending your channel and letting you get views and subs while being an active rule breaker or being under some sort of, you know, investigation. Now, none of that made any sense, right? Because, I mean, I always follow the rules. Don't I? Well, there was that one time I actually got a strike on my channel for violating YouTube's community guidelines. Now, to put it in perspective, a community guideline strike is a big deal. This is not a copyright strike where, oh, you, you pissed off uh, some copyright holder and you know, they've issued a strike uh, because uh, you've uh, passed someone's copyrighted work off as your own. No, 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 no. This is a you broke the house rules and you got a strike. And these can be very severe. Uh, breaking house rules, breaking YouTube's community guidelines rules can lead to your channel straight up getting deleted. I mean, I was fortunate that only a single video got taken down and I got a single strike that went away after six months. I had to do some serious forensic work to find this strike, too. I sifted through a lot of email to determine that I got this strike all the way back in 2015 when I was some young, dumb, new YouTuber. That's right. Barely a year into my glorious YouTube career, I broke house rules. I uploaded an anime video called Top Etchy Anime Series or something like that because I was into doing Top 10 Anime because that was all the rage at the time. Top 10 this, Top 5 that. And I'm like, oh, I know what people are going to watch. Yeah, I got this. So I, I threw together literally overnight some top etchy anime series that may have included some possible and or anime boobies uh, in the video. And even though I, you know, I thought ahead and I age restricted it, it did not stop YouTube from slapping me with the back of the hand. So if there was some list that existed for problem channels, I had to be on it. I mean, it made perfect sense. It, it just, it seemed like this was the answer. I had somehow been shadow banned for almost nine years. There was no other explanation for why my channel just could not ever grow. And this takes me back to the title, the title of this video. You are only one video away from failure. Now, just as I was about to walk out the door and turn the lights off on this channel for good, I decided to go back through the uh, my YouTube uh, dashboard, you know, and go back looking over my analytics. Because if there's one thing that we live and die by is the analytics page on YouTube. And it's just sort of become this habit. You wake up, check analytics. You know, you're sitting on the toilet, check analytics. Uh, before you go to bed at night, you check analytics. Uh, I literally have a phone glued to my non-dominant hand so that I can constantly check analytics. That's a joke, by the way. So uh, 
I noticed something. Something of a pattern that I hadn't seen before. Or maybe I just, you know, wasn't in the right place to notice it. But I noticed a pattern. And it had nothing to do with this elusive shadow ban. But it had everything to do with the YouTube algorithm. The thing that makes or breaks every channel in existence. Now, to simplify it, the algorithm is not some mysterious entity, right? It's not bent on world domination. It only exists to put videos in front of interested viewers, period. That's all it does. It gets the videos watched so that ads can play so that YouTube can make money. It is always and forever only trying to get ad money. And to do that, it needs to know some things about your content so that it can put the right video in front of the right interested viewer. Because if the right viewer gets matched with the right video, money is made. Now this was my channel's fatal flaw. For 10 years, I've been the most inconsistent content creator ever to exist because every time my channel was getting the slightest bit of traction and the YouTube algorithm was learning what kind of content my channel was producing so that it could put it with the right viewers, I would upset the algorithm by changing my content. I didn't give it enough time to stick. And when I started realizing this, I'm gonna tell you, the mental ass kicking that I gave myself was chef's kiss epic. So here's how it goes. I'll give you a rundown of the past 10 years. I started my channel because I wanted to make video, uh, video content like my heroes, Wheezy Waiters, Zay Frank, you know, the Vlog Brothers, <laughs> the Key of Awesome. I wanted to do like variety stuff, right? These channels were doing it. I loved what they were doing. I wanted to do that too. And then I got into doing anime reviews because anime reviews is a thing. I loved anime. I'll do that. And whatever views I was getting, well, they tanked, right? I went from this thing to this other thing, the views go down. So then Casey Neistat was a thing. Hey, I can do that. So I decided to be a Casey Neistat clone, like many of the other Casey Neistat clones. Guess what happens? Views go down. So I decide ah, that's not working, obviously. So let's go back to making anime reviews and views go down. I make live streams, views go down. I change to Let's Plays, views go down. And every time the algorithm has worked out my content and paired it with an audience, I change it. Oftentimes, right as it's about to take off. And this cycle has gone on for a decade. My channel has been on live support for 10 years not because of some shadow ban or because I broke the rules that one time. It's been me all along. And the numbers don't lie. So what have I changed? Well, this is a gaming channel, right? Well, yes and no. So YouTube has determined somehow that I am some kind of gaming news commentary channel Weird as that may seem, it was never my intention to be this. It was never my intention for it to continue as long as it has. I literally got into doing a news commentary and update commentary on video games because of Starfield. Last year, I started making content on Starfield talking about, hey, there's a new update coming. And then a new game came out called Pal World. And I started talking about it. And then I latched on to this game that was still in development called The First Descendant, and I started talking about it. And the next thing you know, I'm making news and update discussion videos on video games. I'm not actually playing them, I'm talking about them. And people were interested in that. So whenever I would switch to a Let's Play, you know, after a week or two of update discussions, well, the algorithm would choke a little bit, but it would sort of auto-correct except for when I did it a lot. I'd go through a phase where I would do some Destiny 2 live streams or some Destiny 2 Let's Plays, or I would upload some Twitch VODs to this channel. And, um, you know, then the algorithm is now trying to determine 
which audience is best for this strange new kind of channel that I want to be. It completely forgot that this is what I did just a year before. Now I'm a news commentator channel, right? So what gives? Why am I suddenly uploading Let's Plays? So yeah, just whenever uh, someone would get interested in the news videos, I would introduce Let's Plays and then the news videos would tank and the Let's Plays would go up a little bit. And then now I'm a Let's Play channel. And then after you know a week, I would go back to doing the news commentary videos and the algorithm this whole time is perplexed, right? The same video that would have gotten a thousand views just two weeks ago is now being destroyed like an unironic remake of Friday by Rebecca Black. So while gaming news commentary is still in the same wheelhouse as Let's Plays and live streams, they are completely different audiences. Most big content creators that do the exact same thing don't really have this problem because they traditionally would keep it separate off of the platform. Whether they realized it or not, they would do their live streams on Twitch and then upload their commentary videos on Destiny or whatever game that they were, were on about to YouTube and never the two would meet. Uh, even, even big content creators would have their own dedicated VOD channel. They would have a YouTube content channel a Twitch VOD upload channel, and then they would live stream on Twitch. <laughs> it was crazy, and it worked. Now, where I ruined things this past month was by reintroducing Starfield Let's Plays to the channel, and then other Let's Plays, because I liked them. Echo Calypse, Wuthering Waves, Fallout London, and then back to more news commentary. And in that time, the algorithm was about to deep fry its own brain trying to figure out what to do with the back and forth change in content. I introduced a computational error that sent the channel spiraling out of control and for most of August, this channel has been dead. So the only conclusion that I can foresee and the only possible solution to this problem is to never let me make a video ever again. But that's not going to happen, so to remedy this, I am forced to separate my own content. Let's Plays and live streams cannot exist in the same biosphere as gaming news commentary, at least not on this channel. I'm sure that viewers who watch my first Descendant videos would love to watch a three-hour live stream, but at the end of the day, these core viewers have formed a kind of specific niche. There's not enough people interested, at least in my niche, interested in three hour long live streams of um, First Ascendant. Now, there's no guarantee that this is gonna solve the issue at this point. I'm really just kind of hoping for a miracle. The channel has been through literal hell and back, and I can only hope that it isn't too late to save it. This is the last thing I know to do. It's all that's standing between a continued presence here on YouTube and walking away after 10 years of wasted effort. So like the title of the video says, you are only one video away from failure. Not because your video is bad, but because your video is just trying to reach a different audience. It can literally be that simple. Something that you wouldn't think would conflict. Like who knew that talking about a video game and making a live stream or let's play of the same video game on the same channel would cancel one another out. And this is why, you know, a couple of years ago you would hear, don't mix your live streams and your regular content because one audience will not be interested in the other. And that's sort of the truth, but really, it's about YouTube's algorithm not knowing what to do with it because it pushes it to this group or it pushes it to that group. Trying to find that, you know, that crossover is, well, that's like finding the goose that lays the golden egg. If you can find that, you're good. Now, if you really want to watch the Let's Plays, and I hope that you do because I want to continue making them, then you can find a link to the second channel permanently at the bottom of the channel's homepage here or you can find it in the video description box. It will be there 
Uh, I'm going to go back and try to put it in as many videos as I can, but definitely go over there and give the second channel some love. I'm not expecting you to try to build that channel up. If, if the live streams are for you, that's where they're going to be. And if the new uh, video game news and commentary stuff is for you, this is where it's going to be. I am going to completely keep those things apart from one another. So that way, hopefully we don't have this problem in the future. And after 10 years, maybe I can finally learn a thing or two about how to be a YouTuber and we can get this channel uh, finally off the ground a little bit more. So I hope this video has uh, helped you a little bit. If you've been thinking about being a content creator and you've maybe encountered some of the same problems with your channel not growing and not getting the, the views that, you know, inexplicably, even if you're making similar content, you know, wondering why you're not getting the views. And it's because of, you know, something as simple as just a slight alteration can throw the whole thing out of, out of whack. So I hope this has helped you. And I hope that this, uh, for those of you that have been interested in what's going on with the channel, I hope that you found this fascinating and that, uh, you know, uh, now you know just how close the channel has been to being absolutely doomed. And um, it would have really sucked. I, I didn't want to walk away from the channel. I didn't want to walk away from 10 years worth of work uh, to try to go start over with a brand new channel. But, you know, at the, at the same time, I was a little excited because I was thinking, well, you know, knowing everything that I know now, how could I possibly grow a new channel? So th there was also that, but uh, just know that this is, you know, this is kind of the last thing that I, I know to do to fix this problem. And uh, hopefully it will get itself sorted out and the YouTube algorithm will kick in and we can get all of our regular viewers back and everyone can find a spot to be in the Grusbyverse, the extended Grusbyverse. So, Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to this. If you managed to make it through to the end, you have my ultimate special thank you for uh, listening to my voice drone on this long. And um, if you've got any thoughts or comments on this whole weird situation, uh, definitely put them in the comments. But I'd like to ask you a question. Um, and I, I'd really like for you to, to take the time to answer if you could. What sort of viewer are you? Are you here because of the Let's Plays? Are you here because of the gaming news content? Um, and if so, you know, where do you, you know, where do you fall? Are you mostly Let's Plays, mostly news commentary? Um, because that, that sort of feedback definitely helps me when it comes to planning future videos and which videos, uh, which videos to make, because there are a lot of games that I would like to talk about that I don't know if they're necessarily uh, within the same, you know, umbrella as other games like gotcha games or, you know, Wuthering Waves or Genshin Impact, those type of games. I don't know that they would necessarily mesh with an audience that's here for the first Descendant or for Warframe or Destiny 2. Uh, so, yeah, which video games would you like to see talked about? That sort of stuff. Just just let me have it. Give it all to me. Anyway, thank you guys so much for sticking around. And uh, I hope that you have a great day. Keep being awesome, everyone. And I will see you all in the next video.